you're listening to the sweet sounds of oh my god it's nick <laughs> <laughs> Nor do we have confetti. Yeah. Uh, just have pretend you? there's confetti. Yeah. We have a picture that says confetti. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just throw pieces of paper that say confetti <laughs> on them. <laughs> Full scap. No, man. Just hold up an eight and a half by 11. <laughs> it says confetti. Confetti. That confetti. Also works too. confetti. Yeah. <laughs> like that dude from the longest yard. I didn't do it. Yeah, basically. <laughs> oh, quite the cup there. Look at you, son. We already gave you your shout-out last week for these Batman cups. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the F-Word Podcast. Uh, the best <laughs> podcast you'll <laughs> never know. Today, I'm a little bit more excited than usual, because last night, as we were trying to figure out what's going on, Anthony lied to us by thinking he knew what was happening in his life. Turns out he doesn't, and he wasn't able to make the show for this week. Uh, but that's okay, because... After a year hiatus, I would yeah, say. Yeah, it's been almost a year, eh? Nick easily messages yeah. the group, and he says, what time are you doing this? And usually we do that, like, we do that at, like, six, six now. And then, you know, it's fine, because it's a quick, short, hot hour. Yeah. Oh, is that my phone? That'd be um, you. And then all of a sudden, he's like, well, if you can make it eight, I will be there. I will be a third. He'll be a third. And guess and what we did? I am. We made it a third. It's eight o'clock on Way Friday past my bedtime. No, you're at 9.30, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Warm glass of milk is ready to go. Uh, as you all know, the Saskatchewan Podcast Network is part of, sorry, the F Word Podcast is part of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network, which is uh, sponsored, funded by Connexus, Connexus. Credit Union. Uh, Connexus, hashtag money talk. I lost the scripts. I'm not okay. going further back into my email. In fact, today was really weird because we did a security training. So this company called No Before is uh, big on cyber stuff mm -hmm. so like what to point out when you're finding like when to look in your email to see what's spam and what's not usually there's a call to action usually the email that was sent and that you replied to are different like there's all sorts of things to look for and i guess the guy that did it actually hacked into like the fbi when he was younger mm -hmm. so oh, now geez. he works for this company helping other companies to you know uh, do it literally 45 minutes after I did that, I get a notification that someone from Alberta is trying to hack into my Facebook. And it's like, someone tried to log into your Facebook from Alberta. I was like, well, it's a good thing I brushed on some, up on some training. <laughs> so that was really weird. Has weird. nothing to do with the fact that Nick's back. What's up, man? It's been not too year. much. I, I mean, know. Not a year for us seeing you, but it's been a right. year since you were on the, the mic podcast. with Mike Lowry. Lowry. <laughs> but he seems right. to think Mike Lowry's going to be all right. There he is. Yeah. Did you watch? Did you see the new one, by the way? No. Uh, have yeah. you guys? He did. I saw it. He liked it. You haven't, I haven't seen, seen it? it? I haven't <gasps> gone to a movie in a long time. Let's go. <laughs> All, right. All together. Holding After hands. this, right yes. now. <laughs> yeah. Um, Nick, what's up, man? Nothing. Just, uh, you know, being a dad and getting all that kind of figured out and yeah. sleep schedules and all that fun stuff, but it's been good. Mm -hmm. And now you're what? Your youngest is um, over almost five months. months. Oh, almost five months. Okay. Yeah, yeah. February second, uh, this Sunday, she'll be, yeah, five months. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Yeah, I know. So how's that been? Well, she hasn't found a job yet, which is a little annoying. But she's just know. freeloading around the house, right? Like, yeah, mm -hmm. just loafing. Don't you hate when that playing happens? Playing video games, doing nothing with her life. Well, hey, hey, hey there's <laughs> yeah. something wrong with the video games. Let's, <laughs> let's be perfect. Yeah, but she doesn't honest. play good ones. Oh, so, okay. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. Are you still forced to watch shows that you don't want to watch, or is, like, is it pretty easy with the kids? Like, you know, if you guys want to watch a show that you want, that like, let's say they don't swear in it, for instance, yeah. but it's <clears throat> obviously not something that they'll get. Like, is that an issue, or do you have to watch cartoons a lot? We watch cartoons a lot, but you know, there's times where we just say like, "Mom and Dad want to watch this show," so you know, we watch your shows. You got to watch this one, or you can play, yeah. and it's fine, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, the for the most part, we watch a lot, and then like on the TV, like. They'll watch the cartoons, yep. and then I'll usually have my phone. Like I'll watch something on my phone, like a couple yeah. videos or whatever. 
trailers that you guys send. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Whatever chats we're talking about. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's been on, especially when Vass, which by the way, MG Vass is here, and of course Nick, uh, <laughs> Vass <laughs> well. like gets on his like thing every once in a while, and he sends like seven posts that he figured out in a row. It's like ding, ding. You're ding, welcome. Ding, ding. And they <laughs> come in at like five thirty in the morning. Super, like, cause you're up yeah. that yeah, early. Basically. Yeah. I mean, so am I. But so I'm like, I oh. look and. You know how the Facebook Messenger has a little circle with the numbers on it. I'm like, who the fuck is sending this shit? Right now? <laughs> it's all me. <laughs> it's all but yeah. to be fair, if you that up? wasn't the case. You up? You up? <laughs> if that wasn't the case, we wouldn't know know half the shit for the notes. So yeah. you're kind of like the research guy. Yeah, like you're, yeah, you're almost like a producer in a way, but you're yeah. more of the research. Wouldn't that is that what it is? Like producer makes the show, the host of the host, whatever. Um, producers kind of put it together. Engineers engineer the, the thing, but the people that get research is that just mark like the research guys? Yeah, I, I don't guess. know. Yeah, would you? I don't know the term. W- would it be a producer? Maybe or a writer. No, because a writer would be he would be him telling us what to say. Yeah, oh, like as to more back. directly. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? You are know. the you are the you're the producer. You're, cool. you're a mixture of a few different yeah. things. There you go. Yeah, yeah. And then there's Anthony. The freeloader, and I'm only saying this because he's <laughs> not here. If he, his life can get together and, yeah. and figure if out, if he actually listens to this episode, then he'll vegan tell us about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, if he, if he, this is your test. As, if he messages and says "fuck you guys," <laughs> then that's because he's heard the episode. Yeah. Um. Oh, which before I forget, Arturo, if you're listening, I forgot to message you after last week's episode. Uh, if you do have a picture of you with the T-shirt that we sent, which I still haven't gotten yours, like I have yeah. yours at my at the condo, it's Kay. there. I forgot to bring it again today. All good. Um, if you could snap a picture of that and tag us in it, I want to see what it looks like on the in like as a photo. Um, yeah, I haven't ordered any new ones because I'm waiting to get better quality shirts. Mm-hmm. But I'll give you yours just so you can like walk around in it and see what it looks like yeah. in terms of like, hey. This design works. This doesn't. And usually, your wife Christine's very, very objective with that stuff. So I'm actually yeah. half expecting her to give the best feedback. No offense. Yeah. To anybody at the table, including myself. She has no issues of hurting people's feelings. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> She's quite heartless. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I want to start with this or if I want to end with this. I think I might as well. No. You should start with your worst one. It's not the worst. Oh, okay. It's it's. Well, the one that's going to make you go off on a tangent. Oh, it's not a tangent either. Oh, Let's just go at it. Uh, No, no, we'll leave it to the end. Never mind. Um, Okay, Anthony just sent us one. It's the Kobe Bryant story. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What do I have? Okay, I'll tell you what I have because I sent the thing, but I I forgot to. Uh, We got some Grammy stuff, very minimal Grammy stuff because I didn't watch it. Vass Mm -hmm. has got his gentleman review. Uh, the Batman started filming. Uncharted won't be back. Uh, the man, the Minnesota Miracle Man is coming back. Uh, Linda Hamilton wants to leave Terminator. Two Transformers years movies. Later. Fucking Birds of Prey early reactions. Some trailers. Some Sundance shit. Some Loki shit. Fifty Cent shit. And I just started watching the first forty-five minutes of Uncut Gems. Where do you guys want to start? I don't know. I just got here, so you guys go. You guys go. Cap. Cap. How is that a family barbecue? All right. Let's go with Vasily's, uh, Vass's gentleman. Oh, you're starting with the good stuff right away. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Let's just get with that. This was Guy Ritchie's return to form. Like, if you're a fan of his Snatch (laughs) <laughs> and <laughs> yes, you're a fan you, of Snatch. Of Snatch, the of movie is Snatch. prevert. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Lost Talk and Two Smoking Barrels. This is right up your alley. Like, this is. I mean, he's done. He did Rock and Rolla as another really good one. Kind of same style as, like, kind of. Would you say, like, mob y? Like, almost kind of mob gangster y. Like, yeah, most street, of the street, stuff's around the sur- streets. Sur- street mobs and stuff like that. Yeah. But this was. This, I don't know. Like it was a return of form, but it was on a leather, another level as well. Like with the cast, like he cast this perfectly. Yeah, uh, I'll tell you right now, Hugh Grant does amazing, hmm. stands out quite a bit. And one that you wouldn't expect is Colin Farrell's character. He actually, in a way, comes in and steals a little bit of the show. But he's good though. Colin Farrell's he's, yeah. been good. He's so good. But with his character being what it was, it wasn't meant to be a prominent. Uh, I guess you can say not the most prominent role. Like it's supposed to be like a sub prominent, but it t- comes out swinging. Like it's so such a good character. Uh, Charlie Hunnam does great, and then Matthew McConaughey. Like 
He does very well. I, I can't remember the last time he did. I mean, he did Lincoln Lawyer. was pretty amazing. That was good. I never Dallas saw Dallas. Buyers, I never actually saw that, but I heard he got an Oscar for that. But uh, he does very well in this. But overall, the movie has quite an interesting feel. You don't know how it's going to turn out and the the twist behind it and how, how he put everything together is amazing. And So you're saying there's a twist. There is a yeah, twist. And even better, it's completely open for a sequel. Okay. In mm. a very good way. They do it. I think they do it justice. They do it good. And you're you're wanting more. Hold on. When you say they do it justice to compared to what? Well, here's the thing. You're just saying it's a good movie. It's a good movie. Okay. And the way they leave you, you want more. Not that like it should be ending here and that's it. It's yeah. like, oh, we definitely need to see the next step kind right. of thing. And that justice in the sense <laughs> that if they set it up. And so you're saying they just made a really good movie that makes you want to see another one. Yeah, okay. Well, when you say they do make it, ju- they do it justice. Okay, well, that don't means focus on the was, one word. Okay, there was something. <laughs> there was something original, <laughs> oh, like right, let's yeah. say a comic or a, a source material, a book, for yeah. instance. And you can say they did justice to the source material. That's what doing justice to something is. Giving justice to something that doesn't exist is just creating something that doesn't okay, exist. To be perfectly candid, I don't care <laughs> anymore about this. Anyways, great movie, great cast, and Guy Ritchie's kind of returned to his roots. So you Excellent. guys should definitely go see it. All right. Well, speaking of Matthew McConaughey, I guess, because like the other one that I – one of my favorite roles of his is like that small cameo he had in Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. When he did that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Apparently, Jordan Belfort, the character that Leonardo, Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio played him played in Wolf of Wall Street – uh, is suing for like three hundred million or something. Yeah, something about the company that financed it. So Red Granite and CEO Riza Aziz are currently facing charges for embezzling two hundred forty-eight million dollars from a Malaysian state-run development fund. And so from Belfort, the Malaysian Prime Minister. <laughs> uh, dude, I'm that for sure. <laughs> he wants to kill the Middle Eastern dude. It's like no, the Croatian guy. Is that what he said too? Belfort claims he had no idea the film was made with stolen money and argues the scandal has tainted the rights to his story. Even though he gave up those rights so they can make the story, mm-hmm. uh, Scorsese hasn't um, commented on this. But, uh, yeah, Belfort was completely blindsided to learn after the fact of the source of the funding. Hmm. I mean, I don't know. Um, And then he says something about anybody who does this has stolen money. I knew it. It was so obvious. But it seems like the movie came out, like, what, five years ago? Yeah, I uh, couldn't tell you. No? I'll tell you. Off the top of my head, no. Our fact checker. Fact checker. Fact checker. Fact checker. Vasily will check it out. Um, Anyways, I just thought it was really weird i mean after the fact suing them after finding out but from a guy that yes he's a recovering alcoholic but he did some pretty shitty things to a lot of people like obviously taking their money like is there sympathy there does it matter or is it just like this isn't going to go sounds anywhere. like he's grasping at straws just to see if he could get it i think what he's going to end up trying to do or what his end game is is uh, not to be end game sort of Avengers, but um, he's going to sue for three hundred million, and yep. then maybe they'll give him like ten and say, "Okay, just take this and shut up, and let's kind of you know drop the suit." So they'll settle. Yeah, it's I don't know. He's coming weird. up with an astronomical number just so that he could settle to get ten percent of it. So the company, mm-hmm. I guess, had said that Jordan Belfort's lawsuit is nothing more than a desperate and supremely ironic attempt to get out from under an agreement that for the first time in his life has made him rich and famous through lawful and legitimate means. That was from the Red Granite attorney, Matthew Schwartz, in a statement. Belfort is himself is said to only have paid $12.8 million for the $110 million owed to investors. But uh, anyways, I thought that was so random, and I saw it. I'm like, wow, it came out when? 2013. Holy fuck. It's quite a while ago. Jeez. Jesus. That is way longer than I thought. Mm-hmm. God damn it. Almost seven years now, depending what month. Yeah. But yeah. Still. Yeah. Holy fuck. Seven wow. Years well, ago. then. Um, do we want Mel Gibson and Danny Glover to come back for Lethal Weapon 5? Uh, I saw that. I'm like, really? Uh, like, what's the point? Same thing. Yeah. yeah. Th- this time, they're definitely too old for this stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's like that Irishman yeah. thing, which, hey, I, I, I still love the movie. I still yeah. liked it. But he was looking old. By now, they have to be desk jockeys. So did Martin imagine. Lawrence in Bad Boys. He looked old and he, fat. I'm sorry. Which one? The Martin last Lawrence. one. Yeah, but you didn't like, see the movie. No, but you saw the trailers. Oh, in the trailers? Yeah, like Did he, he seem sluggish in the movie? Uh, 
I think yes, but he kind of played to it in the sense like he kind of used it as part of his whole demeanor throughout the whole movie. Fair. So he wasn't running and gunning the same. I wouldn't say so. No, like he he would he would make constant jokes that like they are getting. Well, he's like I'm too, too old, old for this. Like kind of in a way, in their own way that they're doing it. But yeah. and then you have Mike Lauer, who was just like I'm gonna keep doing this. Like you saw the trailer, I'm gonna keep yeah. doing Tom Hundred and whatever. And so, <laughs> but. Yeah. Uh, with this lethal weapon, uh, and again, they're saying that's the end of lethal weapon. Like, I mean, what have they been doing up until now since what the fourth one? Yeah, yeah, that was a long ass time ago. That was like when was that? 2010. Here we go. No, no, was it? Yeah, as late as, uh, Do you was think it later then? I, I want to say like 20, 2004. Oh, maybe I could be way could off. Could be earlier. Though. I don't know. Because that's lethal the weapon one... four was 1998. No Jesus way. Christ. We were wow. <laughs> That's like twenty years ago, man. What the fuck have they been doing for twenty years? Yeah. Rene Rousseau has the kid. Uh Jet Li is dead. Um <laughs> Danny Glover's character has uh, his daughter is married, Chris Rock's character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um Fuck, I haven't seen this movie in a long time. Bear Joe with me. Joe Pesci's in it. Joe Pesci's character has to be dead. Yeah. He was yeah, he has to be dead. Uh, what else are they gonna do? Seriously, yeah. And like, oh, are they gonna do the thing where they're like the young, like they have to train the young guns who end up being like the bad guys, and then they have to take them down, like, and really play to that we're getting too old for this? Like, I don't know. Setting up the next franchise. I don't know. They're they're I saying mean, this is supposed to close the it show. off. I'm like, I feel four kind of ended it for you guys anyway. Like, they weren't terrible. No, I, I, I they enjoyed were great all of them. No, but you got the first one's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. you got to get to a point where you're like. Okay. I'm too old for this shit. Well, <laughs> where it just becomes like non unbelievable, right? Like, yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, Martin Lawrence and and uh, Will Smith, love love Bad Boys, love those guys as as actors. They're they're awesome together. Their chemistry is great. Yeah. But come on, you can't sit here and tell me that Martin Lawrence, who looks like he's put on at least fifty pounds, mm. and is supposed to be this cop who's going through, and I don't know the storyline, but I'm guessing there's drug cartels and all this kind of stuff involved. And you're going to tell me that he's still a cop, A, after probably not passing the physical exam that you have to do every couple of years. Right. And B, has enough in the tank to do all these crazy stunts and deal with whatever cartels. Because he was going to transfer in 2004. That one's when Bad Boys 2, I think, came out. And then he was going to transfer, and he was already, you know, short guy, right? Yeah. Uh, Short, bigger guy. Yeah. Will Smith, I can still buy because the guy always looks like he's just. He looks lean. He yeah. looks like yeah. Jack, right? Yeah. Looks I like mean, he's passed the exams. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. guess it depends on having seen the damn movie. And my guess is they don't really follow the six year rule very much in the well, movie world. But honestly, Mel Gibson has aged better than Danny Glover. Danny Glover. For sure. Danny Glover will definitely be up in the age. And yeah. I, I'm, I'm thinking he's a desk jockey and then something from their past comes back at them. I don't know. Again, yeah, but from again, what we understand, like the writers are back, the original okay. and producers, and Danny Glover and Mel Gibson. Interesting. <clears throat> so, what they come of it, and they said this is it. I don't know why you need to do it, but but they, they said that in the last one too. Did they? Yeah, I don't remember. I was. I, I they're swear, like, I this is a one. great way to like you know wrap it up and da da da. Like yeah. that's why I'm like, why? They had a fight scene with Jet Li underneath a ship, a shipping, a sinking boat, a shipping boat, a sinking yeah. boat. Yeah, and save a bunch of. People that were in a tank. And they Anyways. truly got their ass kicked, too. Um, yeah. Speaking of why, <laughs> the Fast 9 trailer came out. <laughs> and all you mean I why could, not? <laughs> all I could think of was the literally the only two words that came out of my mouth when the, I, it ended was, fuck off. Right? Like, okay. You know, like... There's no bridge, Dom. Oh, oh God. And then, like, it Christ. swings like you're How? as if you're at the freaking fair. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> like, it, like, you knew it was going to just hang on to it. Yeah. And let me guess, his t shirt or wife beater is going to be, like, pristine Steam. on the other yeah. side. Yeah. Because of that sweet, sweet leather that they have. Like, Where they're no, driving right on off. the bridge that's falling apart oh, my and, God. like, ah. Uh, Everything about it's it. Listen, perfect. it made me this angry. Is, it's perfect. This is <laughs> this is one so of those angry. situations, Vass, yeah. where nothing that you say <laughs> is ever, ever gonna make it better. And yeah. the reason I'm saying make it yeah. better is because it just seems like they just don't give a fuck. Yeah, they just think that if we put these people together, mm-hmm. people will just eat it up. And guess what? They, we probably we do. Will. I mean, I won't. I, I didn't even see Hobbs and Shaw because. 
I'll tell you right now, just from Hobbs the trailer, I already like this one way better than Hobbs and Shaw. <laughs> it looks exactly the same, except with more people. What the yeah, fuck Hobbs is Han doing back? Yeah. The dude literally got burned. The entire purpose of them being pissed off at Jason Statham to begin with was based was predicated on the fact that he killed Han, which was so stupid because clearly he wasn't there in Tokyo Drift. So, And also, his entire time of talking about his past and how he remember his father in number five and talking about how he beat a guy to death because his dad died or whatever, and now he has a brother named John Cena who's, for some reason, been <laughs> training... <laughs> 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 I, you know what? If they incorporate that in his theme song when he shows up, then that'd be great. Maybe. That would be great. And then Charlize Theron's back, which she didn't die in the last one. I get no. it. But then why is Helen Mirren his surrogate mother? Who's surrogate? Dom's? It's not a surrogate mother. No, I'm saying she's acting like one. She's sitting there giving him advice oh. and siblings and bullshit like that. Like, come on! Don't even like. I mean, at least pretend like we're halfway intelligent. Yeah. You know, at least pretend we're not just like someone like we're not the equivalent of a paper towel on a bed that someone used to jerk off in. Maybe like <laughs> consider us to be people that actually have more That's intelligence <laughs> than that. <laughs> That's the imagery is so vivid. Yeah. Well, I've uh, been reading a lot. It's it's awful though. Like the 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 trailer itself like it, you're right though. I mean, just that one scene at the end where the car gets hooked onto the onto the hook with the rope, and it's like literally swinging around, like Tom Cruise and Mission Impossible on the up. on yeah. the tower. Right? I just like, can't wait to find out where yeah. it ends up on the side, side of, of the hill. Goddamn mountain. Yeah. <laughs> actually, where it rightfully should in the water, and it probably drives vertically perfect. Of course, yeah. But when does the hook come off the car? Never. Yeah. So it survived the whole thing around, and you're going to tell me it's going to magically let go right when it needs to, so it can continue driving. Exactly. It's going to lose magnetism at the pristine moment. Oh, yeah. speaking of magnetism, Charlize Theron has a fucking helicopter that can catch a car mid-air. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In, in a magnet. Mid-air, in mind mid-air you. Mi- Thank yeah. you. In mid-air, mind you. It's a, they've got a magnet plane. <laughs> like, and then, of course, as, like, And he says it as if yell. it's something that's so common. He's, yeah. he's got a magnet plane. Oh, like, man, I had that on my out. Christmas list, Dom, and you never got it for me. Yeah. Now she has it. All I asked for are Freaking sharks with freaking laser beams on their head. Is that too much? Yeah. Freaking plane with the freaking magnet. Ludicrous is Dr. Evil. He just wants all these gadgets. <laughs> yeah. Tyrese is just going to sit there and yell. Yeah. For some reason, uh, Dom's sister also knows karate now. Um, did. Didn't know that. She's a Toretto. Uh, and yeah, again, <laughs> yeah. when did Dom have a brother? Why are we like, why is this coming up yeah, now, now in the ninth yeah. one? You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, I agree. It's all dumb. It's so dumb. Um, yep. Did you guys see the Quiet Place 2 trailer? No. No. I I did. It's a good trailer. Solid trailer. And it kind of touches on stuff that happened, that happened before. <laughs> if you guys have a chance, Quiet Place is really good, which is all actually the complete antithesis of Fast 9, a very, very loud place. <laughs> um, Batman has officially started filming. Matt Reeves put out a picture that shows like the... The fucking thing that clips, you know, when yeah, they say yeah. take one, snap. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then it showed, like, the Batman and everything like that. So that's mm-hmm. do- dope. Director's he, Block. Is that what it's called? Director's Block. Director's Block, right? Sure. Um, Sounds right Col- to Colin Farrell calls the movie, or the script, beautiful, dark, <clears throat> and moon- moving. Mooning. Moving. Moving. Mooning. <laughs> Sounds about right. I'm good with that. that I think it's good. what we expected, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. And to be fair, I mean... Who the fuck knows? Like, he could be saying that he really liked it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. What's he going to say? It's so par. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. No, that's true. That's why it's so hard now, like especially now where it's like you, the older we get, the less magical Hollywood is, and it's all just BS most of the time. <laughs> yeah. Like we still love talking about it, mm-hmm. but like a lot of times you're just like, yeah, they say that, but yeah. And speaking of which, the early reviews for Birds of Prey, the mm-hmm. Holly Quinn yeah, movie, yeah. all super good. People are actually comparing it to a Tarantino movie where I'm just like, eh, let's hold off a little bit. That's here. a little much. Yeah. <laughs> That's a little bit much. <laughs> yeah. Um, however, somebody by the name of Jeff Snyder, uh, he used to work for, oh, fuck, what was it called? Deadline? No. Inside Hollywood? Maybe. Anyways. D- Dateline? It was, a, it was a website for <laughs> movies and stuff. <laughs> Deadline? Deadline. <laughs> yeah. Not Deadline. Is no. that what I said? Yeah, you said Deadline. Oh, Dateline. That's either way. Deadline NBC? Either to catch way, a predator. To yeah. catch a predator. Why don't you have a seat over here? <laughs> 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 Fuck. 
You're in a safe place. You're in a safe place. <laughs> <laughs> and no man. Arrested. Who are you? I'll get to that in a second. <laughs> so he is a NYU whatever entertainment reporter. I forget what the fuck he used to work. But anyways, he's a guy I followed for a little bit. I have him on Twitter. Don't really like follow follow him too mm-hmm. much. But every time he says something, it's pretty on point. And this is the point that he made about Birds of Prey, which I shared to the group that kind of shattered Anthony's world just for a split second. His tweet was, Birds of Prey. Don't trust anyone about this movie except for me. The guy who loved Joker hated Aquaman and called Suicide Squad the most disappointing movie of the year. As we've seen 100 million billion times, early reviews of comic book movies simply cannot be trusted. So that's So he's saying it's not as good as people say it is. I think that's what it is. I don't think Mm -hmm. he's saying that it's like bad by any means, but obviously there's probably some type of like a I think there's a lot riding on it because you're continuing a character from a very failed movie right so and I think that's always a difficult part behind it is that you're using the exact same actress same yeah. character mm-hmm. and you're trying to continue her story and build upon what was wrongfully done in the movie and I mean maybe her part in the movie was fine which whatever I can't remember very much but as a whole being a part of that suicide there's always an asterisk next to it so oh, I think they're sure. trying to build on that, and they have a lot riding on it, and this could be the bridging point where, like, okay, they did good with Birds of Prey. Let's see what – I mean, we trust James Gunn for the most part. Yeah, but th- what, what does this have anything to do with the early reviews? About? Birds of Prey. About That's in general about. Birds of Prey or – Just in general, like the fact that the, uh, the, the reviews are re- coming yeah. in and they're really good early reviews, and this guy, who I feel yeah. is a trusted source – Yeah, yeah. Um, is saying that don't trust them. We're talking about early reviews. We're not talking about the reputation of Birds of Prey. Yeah, but the early review of it is based on its reputation as well. Not necessarily. Yeah, sure it is. Why would it be based? Why would they praise a movie based on a character from a failed movie that was a huge disappointment from everybody? I don't know. <laughs> Nick, I think what what you're trying to say is that this movie is supposed to be a redemption of the yeah. Suicide Squad, and the early reviews. Are positive and 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 I don't know if I'm wrong, yeah. but this is what I'm trying to. Yeah. I'm thinking you're trying to say is that the reviews are positive in that the redemption happened because of this movie, yeah. but this guy is saying don't like, believe it. Don't believe it. But mm-hmm. I think I, I don't know why he would say that mm-hmm. because well because he saw it right. So why doesn't yeah. he give a good review? Why doesn't he give a review of any kind? All well, he it says was just a tweet. He just said, "Don't believe all," because every single early review is just super trust mine. But what was his what was his review? Does it say he just said that he loved Joker, hated Aquaman, and was super disappointed by Suicide Squad? So right. I mean, I, again, following this guy, I don't. know. He's one of those guys that mm-hmm. I don't agree with everything mm-hmm. he says, but he's usually kind of right somewhere along there. Again, that was like one of the few, but a lot of them are saying that it's criminally fun celebration of sisterhood. Um, mm. reviews are in. They're surprisingly good. Oh, they say. Uh, oh, yeah. It's like John Wick and Deadpool comparisons in this. Um, which mm-hmm. I mean, who the fuck knows? Absolute blast. People are saying. Again, lots of comparisons to other things. Those are pretty generic comments. Though. Yeah, like with and the exception the of the too, sisterhood one, but like yeah. it's an absolute blast. It's great. Like, and I mean, like. I think a lot of this also is just like when they said that Batman v Superman got a standing ovation when they screened it for mm-hmm. the DC execs. Like, of course, they couldn't well, say yeah. they gave it a mm-hmm. standing ovation. <laughs> I don't know. The movie looks fun. I'm a, I am like I'm excited for it, even though I'm like a guy that's excited for a lot of things that don't end up seeing them. But have you seen the tra- any trailers? Like, do you? Yeah, I saw the one that th- that was that, that was, was in. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it it looks okay. I it. For me, it just looks like a bunch of hooligans running around from the trailer. <laughs> like I don't know what female hooligans, female, though, Nick, female I mean. hooligans. But you know, I like, until you know more about the, what the story is and how they kind of put it all together. Like, sure, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I'm sure it'll be okay, and it can't be worse than Suicide Squad. That's a fucking good point. Yeah, Bass. I already said my points. Yeah. Okay. That I got uh, shit on for. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never talking again. <laughs> Did you guys ever? Uh, two Transformers movies are coming back. One of them. Uh, I guess the one of the writers of John Wick is going to be working on, so that's something. Um, I did like Bumblebee. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if like the same guy isn't doing it, from what I understand, that did Bubble Bumblebee. Bumblebee. Or no, he left Uncharted. I don't know if the same guy's Travis Knight. I think was his name. He did Bumblebee. Um, I don't know wh- who's 
going to be really working on it. All I know is that one of the writers of John Wick is going to do it. Mm. As our resident Transformers aficionado, does this excite you, or are you like, we'll go on to our next topic, Linda Hamilton, just quite tired? Honestly, I, I think the whole Transformers movies, the uh, I, I, they should just wrap it up. Mm. Like, I, There's not much more you could do. Like, okay, so Optimus fights Megatron, da da Unless they, what I would love to see is the whole, and I know like Optimus already kind of died in one of the movies or whatever, but I want to see like the the animated version of the 80s Mm -hmm. redone today. That's what I would like to see. No humans. No humans. Right. Just just the robots. Yeah. Like, are you talking about like in animation or in live action? In live action. Oh, okay. I think they've already done a really good job establishing what they could do with live action. It's just the storyline that they've created it's all based on our interaction with humans and nice it it lasted as long as it did and it got progressively not as great as the original mm-hmm. and i mean i mean not all of them were amazing but i still enjoyed <laughs> it myself i mean, i still enjoyed them all just enough to keep watching but uh for w- if they were going to go move forward i agree with you that if they just stick to their interaction like they have a much r- more rich history that they could yeah. go back and i mean like you said it's a lot of back and forth megatron Optimus Prime and like he dies he comes back how many times and I mean there's only a certain amount they could probably do that yeah like I don't know I if think that they've already done a certain amount after the third one well yeah. like no, we've no, done no, this already. no I'm yeah. saying for like the TV series like oh, even okay. the animated how it went about it like I mean would you say show to show is there enough there to make a decent long term storyline in whether it go in a full movie or a TV series like uh, The Witcher style or whatever transformers Just only had three seasons right all together as, as the animated oh, yeah okay. it only had three seasons so it wasn't a terribly long series mm-hmm. um i think again too like there, there is stuff that they could go back and now if they were to do it now would be the time because it, with the bumblebee movie it was done in the like it was set in the 80s right yeah. so you could kind of go back to that time frame but i i would like like i think it's almost too uh, like digitally done, like it's o- digitally overdone, mm-hmm. I find. And like, I-, I think if they went back to the original kind of style of the characters, no Dinobots, nothing like that, just like the actual like good versus evil, mm-hmm. you know, bring in the whole Unicron storyline again, like you can mm-hmm. do that and uh, like how that all played out. But I think the movie itself, if they had redone that or like kind of remastered that, like, are they still going to do the He-Man Masters of the Universe? Is that something that they're still looking at doing? Because they were looking I at doing so. it. I think so. I don't know if it's anything. delayed, but I still think that's on the table. So, like, I mean, you you go back to those kind of, like, the the roots of it and, and, and play off of that and do it with a modern spin, but not too modern. Like, you could make a good movie live action that we have enough special effects where we could still use the same kind of look of the characters from the 80s without making them too digitally ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Like Okay, so you're like okay, so it's like, not a- I want to see Megatron as a gun. Right. I don't like and I get the proportion size like you yeah, know he's yeah, this yeah. massive and then he transforms into a little gun. Yeah. But I want to see that. I think people want to see that. Like that's mm-hmm. the the new generation of Transformers lovers we did that. We took care of that with the Michael Bay movies. Yep. Like we, mm-hmm. we dealt with all of that. Go back and do the old school stuff where Starscream was holding Megatron as a gun, where oh, yeah. Soundwave had a purpose. That, like you know what I mean? Like yep. that's what I want to see it's them come back to. And condense. And yeah, no, exactly. No fucking Thank you. humans. And no humans. Yeah. Love God. Well, the thing is, like, they double down on the humans so much, and then you're sitting there being like, "What the fuck is this movie about?" It's called Transformers. Like, yeah. Get a grip. Yeah. 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 Nobody okay. cares about Witwicky and University anymore. Yeah. No uh, shit. I was going to say yeah. that would be worth it. Just bring back Shia LaBeouf for, <laughs> for one more. It would more. not be worth it. It would <laughs> not be worth it. <laughs> um, and this goes into the Lindell Hamilton is quite happy to never return to the Terminator franchise again. Don't blame her. Do no. you think her reaction would have been the same if Dark Fate was a massive success, though? It was. Well. No. It bombed. So it bombed, but I actually thought it was... Really well done. No, no, no. Your yeah, your yeah, singular yeah, opinion, yeah, yeah, your fifteen yeah, yeah. dollars yeah. aside, whatever it bombed. Okay. So I'm saying, Lost if money. it didn't bomb entirely, no. then do you think that she would say the same thing? Now we obviously don't know Lim- Linda I Hamilton. Think she still would have said it. But yeah. You still think she would have? It's been 35 years since the original one. Right, but she wasn't in them for 35 years. 
She's she was in the original, the right. 1986 one. Right, but then there was a huge, huge gap where she wasn't involved in them at all until now. Right. So essentially, but she's, she's been, been in three movies. She's been in three movies, but like her character and her like, which is associated with her, yep. has been in every single movie essentially. Well, not been mentioned. Yeah, yeah. But, it's but been she mentioned. She hasn't done any work for it. Right. Somebody else has mentioned. Name me one her other name. movie that Linda Hamilton's done. Oh fuck, well, I know. Exactly. I think she was in American Graffiti, but I'm not sure. But like the thing is, is I think she's done with it because she's like, this was supposed to be one or two movies and that's it. And yep. we've carried it on for 35 years. It's like you're doing the same job for 35 years. Mm-hmm. At some point you want to retire and call it a day. But and I think that's where though. she's at. Like it's like she hasn't done a shit since the second one. That was it. Like, and not even just working in Hollywood. She's talking about, term- she's singling out Terminator franchise that she hasn't been a part of since the second one. I don't think she was in the TV show at all. I think it was something else in the TV she show. She wasn't in the TV show. So then w- what I mean, like. She was in another one after the second one, though, wasn't she? I think that was it. I, she was uh, in Edward- Judgment Day, yeah. That was that last Edward one? Furlong- the second one? Edward Furlong, I think, was in. Was she was in, in Dante's Peak third, the in 97. <laughs> was Dante's Edward Furlong yeah. in the. Claire Danes one or no? She's voice work. Hmm. Yeah. So what I'm saying is like even if her character is mentioned, she herself hasn't put in the hours in the, the time span from number two till now no. to say that, oh, I'm so exhausted by it. It's like you came back for one movie. I haven't seen it, so I don't know how much work she did in it. Mm-hmm. But like I'm saying is she came back after so long, did the one movie, it bombed, and she's like, I'll be happy to never do another one of these again. Yeah. But she singled out Terminator, not I don't ever want to act again mm-hmm. because I'm just tired of the process of acting. That's why I don't know if, if she would have, if it would have done really well and they would have praised her and all of that, which I think most of the people are like, she was pretty badass still. Yeah. Um, if she would have had the same reaction. I think it's been like a year since it was out, or did, was it this summer? I think it was this summer. It was this summer. Yeah. yeah. 2019. Yeah. That's, that's my only question to it. Like, I'm, I'm just saying in terms of her overall work being put in. Uh, you know what? That's a fair point. I don't know if uh, her, her tune would change if it was based, if it was a huge blockbuster. Right. But I, I think that at some point, though, even though, yes, you're right, she may not have been in any other one since the, the Judgment Day one or whatever. Yeah. Um, I still think, though, that her association with Terminator has been on for that long. The association and just like every time she's typecasted, she's Sarah from Terminator. Yeah, she's yeah. Sarah Connor. So I, I think she's just done with the franchise. I think even mm-hmm. if it was successful, mm-hmm. I think her her tune would have been different. She would have been like, I'm done. But like gracefully, like, I'm glad we ended on a high note. Right. I think because it tanked, that's why her um, whatchamacallit. Her attitude was more like, I'll be glad if I never have to do one again. Right. So I think either way she would have been done. I think yeah. the way she would have worded how she was done would have been different, though. Because I think of Daniel Craig when he was like, I'd rather slip my wrist and do another one of these Bond movies. which And was, yet he's coming in again. And he's doing this last one, right? Yeah. And this was after the last yeah. one. However, they caught him just, I think it was in the middle of when he was filming it. you know. Just and when you're thing, super yeah. involved and super exhausted mm-hmm. and, and tired and everything like that, that's why a lot of people are like, well, let's just wait and see what happens. Yeah. And, of course, he signs on to the next one. He was super excited. They yeah. just caught him in a moment in time during the filming where he was like, I'm, I'm done. done. Yeah. Like, I, I want to slip my wrist right now. I haven't 20 rest. 20-hour days. And yeah, yeah, exactly. All the action, date. all yeah. the physicality that has to be done. And my guess is is that um, Linda Hamilton also was relatively physical in her role. So, so it very much, like I saw the movie, and it very much was the Sarah Connor movie that they wanted. Yeah. It was about her. It was focused around her story and her That's person, cool. which is why I think they were able to coax her to come back to this character, mm-hmm. which is, she was probably done with it at judgment day and she had her time with it and that's fine. But to bring her back was apparently very difficult as it was. So that's why I can imagine she's saying, Oh, you know, it was difficult to get her in. I think it was difficult to get her in, but I think James Cameron being on board helped helped. Uh, even though they, well, I don't know if that would help. They were married and then they had a pretty bad divorce. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can't remember. I can't oh. remember. Either way, it was difficult to get her back to agree to it. I think she she trusted the script in the end and she liked, okay, this is a good story and she's <laughs> good with it. She's done. She's did her thing. Well, and let's be honest. It's a paycheck too. Yeah. yeah. It's work. Yeah. yeah. And now, he, now, like you mentioned, James Bond, Daniel Craig stepping away from the, like, I had, you know, it's now my time to pass it on to the next person in yeah. a graceful way, not like I'm going to slip my wrist or ever do one again. It's like, no, I'm, I've done my time with the character, and here we go. Well, and but I remember, like, let's say um, when I was doing CrossFit, 
and someone would like during the, like in the, between the workouts, someone would be like, "Hey, how you doing?" Somebody shoot me right now. Yeah. Like I've said that <laughs> yeah. before. Like mm-hmm. fucking kill me right now because I am dying. Yeah. Okay. And so I, I think Craig's comment was very sim- like was like that. Mm-hmm. And maybe Linda's was like that too, being like, listen, like I came back. I didn't really want to. Mm-hmm. If I never have to do one of these, I'm cool. Yeah. yeah. You know, which fuck good for her. At least she yeah. came back. And again, that's the same reason Anthony Hopkins gave for being in the Transformers movie. We're actors. Mm-hmm. We get we do jobs. Yeah. You know, and yeah. We, sometimes we get the big, great, amazing things. And sometimes we get other scripts that aren't that great. Yeah. But we're here to work. Robert yeah. De Niro. Robert De Niro. Some Does people give him. Thing? Well, some people give him criticism for all the roles he's taken lately, which is a little out of character mm-hmm. for him. Like he did Bad Grandpa. He oh, did. Oh, yeah. That was uh, a real one. Uh, or Dirty Grandpa. I can't remember which one. I think it was Dirty Grandpa. Yeah, Bad Grandpa was the Knoxville that was one. A, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, so he's done a couple of films like that, which is like, oh, De Niro. You know you know him as the mob guy. He's done how many things? He was the Godfather, mm-hmm. basically, like the original Godfather, or like the from the second. And he's doing roles like this. Like, it's work. Like, yeah. I'm, yeah. And he said kind of the same thing as Anthony Hopkins. We're here to do a job. Yep. doesn't matter what the script is. I want to do it. I'm going to do it. Yeah. Shouldn't be held to whatever. Speaking of coming back to do things, mm-hmm. Emilio Estevez will reprise his role as Gordon Bombay in Disney Plus. Yeah. The Mighty Ducks. <laughs> I heard about the that. The Minnesota Miracle Man's coming back. Yeah. Are they doing it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Mac yeah, they're doing a this. series, right? Mac loves this movie. Yeah. Oh, man. It's so good. So, Mac, if you're hearing this, you heard Kay, it. Okay. I, I saw an article. I'm not sure if it's true or not, but the guy who played, was that, did I share that? And it was oh, the, the wrong goalie? One? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. legit. Goldberg is like a meth head now. Yeah, he's I in saw jail that. And he's fucked. Oh, okay. is that legit though? Legit. Okay. He I looks thought I looked awful. Like, I was like, like, oh my god. Dude, he looks like a skeleton. Because there was that one picture of him where like he lost a lot of weight. He had the goatee. It was like yeah. the middle. Yeah. So it was like him as a kid, the middle as an adult, like regular, and then there was the meth version. Yeah. But I'm like, man, if that's him, like that's a like. But in the middle picture looked really good. Yeah. Like, he oh, yeah. looked sharp. Yeah. No, he looked legit. Yeah. If you have to go, like. Nope. Are you sure? Okay. Yeah. I know you got kids to go to. Yeah, no, nothing. they're asleep. They're good. I got nothing to go to. <laughs> a wife. I got that you want to talk about the Atari Hotel? Well, I, I, just, I just looked at you and added oh. to your list. I mean, it's a quick mention, but. There's a hotel. Is it is it themed after video games, or is it just in the shape of the A from the Atari, and that's the hotel? So Atari announced it, and the GSD group are working together to build a video game-themed Atari hotels. So a chain of them game themed so from what this picture the outside looks has the symbol for sure inside i'm sure it'll be to the nines looking atari style they'll probably have in each room lasers yeah (laughs) lasers and with the first location breaking ground in phoenix arizona later this year do you think they're going to turn uh these video game hotels like they did with the casinos where it's like gambling with video games because esports are so big which kind of ties into mm. that one that you sent before where it was like $2.8 billion was put into microtransactions. Mm. Which, by the way, if you're playing video games, stop fucking buying microtransactions. <laughs> like, Jesus, spend your money on other shit. $2.8 yeah, billion in microtransactions. Thing. That's pretty ridiculous. Well, mm-hmm. it's stupid because it reinforces the behavior mm-hmm. because they're going to just keep increasing the shit. And unless laws are put in and they keep getting money for microtransactions, they're going to keep putting in microtransactions. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> and the anomaly is what's happening now where you get a game that has no microtransactions. Games like The Witcher 3 that has three DLCs all coming with the fucking single player experience. Going back to the Atari Hotel. Mm-hmm. So, um, like, when it's an Atari theme, like, what games or what, what could you base the themes off of? Like, is there um, any major Atari games that we know of other than, like, Jumpman Jr., Missile Command, Asteroid? Like, is that – are they going off of those? Like, I don't know. No idea. Because there's no, like, so, real Atari game where you could be, like, there's a character like a Mario. Right. Right? Well, yeah, other than Jumpman Jr. That, I then. think that was – no, that was Coleco. That wasn't even Atari. So, I like, Missile Command I know was an Atari one. Yep. Centipede. Okay. But that was another movie, and it's better not be that theme. Well, I don't think it's going to be the Human Centipede <laughs> Hotel. I don't think that's going to get many, very stays. <laughs> TripAdvisor. You know, it was kind of good, but it felt a little invasive. Yeah. <laughs> get yeah, your yeah, head yeah. out of your ass. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I, I think maybe it might just be like uh, it literally. I think it'll just like look the like the 80s. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like, oh, that's why maybe. I'm saying, like, yeah. you know, like the with the lasers, like, lasers. The, like pink and blue lasers yeah. and just making it look like it's Miami Vice. That's the, yeah. what I'm picturing. Yeah. yeah. I'm just looking all their it's games. It's in Arizona, yeah. right? I thought it was going in Vegas, but it's in Arizona. Well, that's the first one breaking down. Yeah. Breaking. Okay. They're having ground, ground. apparently. Not down. Brown. Breaking ground. Uh, brown. Breaking brown. <laughs> Breaking brown. <laughs> Breaking brown. <laughs> okay, there's two Captain America things here. Sebastian Stan retweeted somebody that had commented on a post from Marvel UK and Ireland and the comment was together until the end of the line and it shows Bucky as regular and Steve Rogers before he got the serum and then somebody at uh, named Mina commented together until the end of the line or until bad inconsistent out of character writing turns Steve Rogers into his own antithesis shouldn't it be together until the end of the lie now do we and then Sebastian Stan a, a, like tweet like retweeted it. Meaning he now, agree with it. The comment is people are saying maybe he agrees with it. I don't see it like that. I just think that he saw like oh that's like you know into my character with yeah. Steve Rogers as when I was normal. But mm-hmm. do you guys agree with this person's synopsis of how they ended Captain America? Hmm. I I could see where they're coming from. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say I necessarily. agree agree with it but i mm-hmm. i could see where the the logic is mm-hmm. but at the same token it's like get over it yeah. <laughs> like i don't know yeah yeah i don't know what to think of it whether i don't agree with them necessarily but i don't you know it's not a disagreement 100 percent. i just it is what it is i think it's an unnecessary comment i yeah. think this person <laughs> is wrong and i'll okay. tell you why i don't think it's the incomplete antithesis of him because he was a hero he saved the fucking world Okay, mm-hmm. along with Iron Man and like mm-hmm. his crew. Yeah. Uh he got frozen on ice. Not only that, to the end of the line, he sacrificed everything, the entire DC branch um of the fucking shield that turned into Hydra and went against Iron Man and fought all of his friends and got blacklisted and court martialed or was like excommunicado, so to speak, from mm-hmm. the government mm-hmm. to save him on the basis that he knew that this wasn't him. Like the Winter Soldier, like he was brainwashed. Yeah. This isn't him. I'm going to put everything on the line for it. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, this Nina person clearly knows shit about shit. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, she's probably not listening to this. And that's fine. <laughs> but she is wrong. It's not the complete antithesis. He went to hell and back to the point where he got him help in Wakanda, went back to Wakanda a few times based on the fact that every time when he went to go see him in Infinity War, he's like, seems like every time I come to you, I need a favor. Mm-hmm. So, clearly. He's gone to him a couple times, but he made sure that his friend was always okay. Hmm. So if there's anybody that's been there to the end of the line, it's Cap. And it's not the antithesis of the character. Hmm. The guy fall, fell in love. He saved the world. What, is he just going to keep going on and doing hmm. the same fucking shit over and over again? Like, technically, he kind of already saved the world when he was frozen on ice for however many years. Yep. So, yep. I don't know. I think this person was a little bit out to lunch. And I don't think Sebastian Stan tweeted it as a way to be like, I agree oh, with this. You know, I agree with this. I think he's just like, eh. Here's another thing. Here's another perspective. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Even though, in my opinion, I think it's wrong. Yeah. But if you think it's right, then whatever. And then the other one, uh, Anthony just sent us before the show started. He asked us if Optimus Prime or Captain America had better inspirational speeches. <laughs> I'd say Cap. You say Cap? Yeah. You say Prime? N- no, oh. didn't say anything. <laughs> I, I, well, I was just assuming. I'm, tra- I'm just trying to think, like, better speeches or better lines. Um, one person, I think it's inspirational speeches. So, op- the one guy commented, "Optimus Prime had me standing up in the theater like I was going to fight Decepticons." That's one person's mm-hmm. comment to that. Um, I think they both have really good ones. I f- don't know if they've all been the same version of the same speeches for both parties. Yeah, like I'd have to go back and see like a cut scene of all of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a tough one to say. I, I think I would say between the two, I, I think I would, I would say Captain America only because he's human and not a robot. So that would be more <laughs> inclined to <laughs> relate to relate that to one more. more. <laughs> what really? Yeah. Uh, well, I, there are some days where I feel like I'm a robot, but 
bad robot. I, no. I don't know. I think Optimus only has the edge because if Optimus's voice had Captain America's lines, it would be the most epic fucking yeah. speech ever. Yeah, it's true. Like, Cap's got some good ones, and he's got the serious one, especially the one in Endgame, yeah. which is what I love, like, Robert Downey Jr. giving him that look. Like, I haven't heard this in a really long yeah. time. Like, I haven't heard a Cap speech. Yeah. And then Ant-Man was like, he's really good at that. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I know, right? Or no, Rocket said that. Right, yeah. But uh, I think that if Optimi- if Cap had Optimus's voice, that would be the most inspirational speech mm. sayer ever. Hmm. Have you ever seen the show on Netflix called uh, The Toys That Made Us? Not yet. No. I've got that saved. Such a good and one. movies that made us. Yeah. Like, they talk about, like, how the toys, uh, like, they came into being made and stuff like that. And they talk about Transformers. They talk about WWF figures, like the wrestling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it's, it's a pretty cool uh like series yeah. like and they just have all the different toys and stuff like that but they do talk about the transformers and how they kind of came about so mm. it's it's cool to see the history of it but yeah well, yeah sorry uh, i just brought that up because we were talking about toys but yeah man yeah but i i still think that captain america i think he had he had better he did i think he did have better inspirational speeches i i yep. think yeah. his lines were were better written and yep. better um Less cliched, kind of, in a way. Yeah, less cliched, and they were like, uh, what you call it, portrayed better. Now, Optimus in the cartoons versus Cap. Not Cap cartoons, but like if you were to take the Optimus mm. from the cartoons, like nah. do you remember as a kid being yeah. like, "Fuck he didn't Cap. have those moments." Because I'll no. tell you this, Optimus Primal in Beast Wars, yeah, had some pretty a insane more, speeches. Yeah. Really? Yeah, like mm. he was pretty, like it was pretty epic. He was awesome. Yeah, yeah, he was really awesome. Mm. And Bumblebee was an actual bee, which was dope as fuck. I. Beast Wars. I, in the Beast in Wars. the cartoons themselves, I like I I don't think there was that many like you know other than Autobots roll out and when right. like you know then mm. it's kind of like okay it's pretty cool when that happens, but yeah. I think the better lines that came out of it were and again not to go back to the movie but where when like you know you had Ultra Magnus and Rodimus Prime having having lines about optimus after he had died and like Mm -hmm. how that came about i think those were more powerful lines than anything optimus did the 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 comments of like the speech is about him not necessarily from him right okay i would say the ones from optimus and i'm just thinking back to the movies were always at the end of the movie right Mm -hmm. never calling out to never to to go into battle it's just like his end thing right yeah because he was always caught up in wires yeah, too. so many wires. Fuck. <laughs> so like, many. Wi- oh you, God! You can't tell me in that entire mechanical ass of yours, you can't find one wire cutter. <laughs> yeah. Like my dad has fucking twelve. Okay, a spinorama that shit. Get out of there. No shit. Like he's shooting fucking lasers and pulling out swords. He couldn't find a sword from his ass yeah. to grab it. Like, oh yeah. look, there's one in my shoe. Fuck. Where's I left your it electrical there. axe? Yeah. Just use yeah, that man. thing. Man. Yeah. God damn. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Yikes. I told you the show changed. A yeah. Bit. yeah. Uh, 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 the Kobe. Sundance record was. We haven't be- even touched Kobe yet. Yeah, we're gonna get. Yeah, I'll yeah. run through these real quick. Okay. The Sundance record was beaten by sixty nine cents, which I think is just fucking hilarious because it was a Lonely Island production and yeah. it was sixty nine cents. Okay, I still haven't seen the trailer for that thing yet. Palm Springs. I don't think it's gonna. The trailer's gonna come out for no? a bit. They show it at Sundance, and then oh. once it gets bought. Just end distribution. It's a distribution that then Shit. sets the trailer. Hmm. So Sundance is the, the films that go there. It's kind of like the stepping stone, like the first step. It, 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 yeah, it's like we made These this thing. Who steps. wants it? And so the Lonely Island guys, I guess they put up like eighty million of their own money to do it too. Wow. Like so, yeah. they're really fucking like hoping that this takes off, right? But it's just funny that it was sixty nine, and they made the song "Just in My Pants," which I think is just also Ooh. hilarious. Uh, Owen Wilson is going to be in the Loki show, which is funny. I think for some reason, hmm. uh, Fifty Cent gets his uh, star on the Walk of Fame. Now, some of you that may not may know Fifty Cent from now, I would highly recommend watching episode four of sorry season four episode four of Hip Hop Evolution to really get a feel of how Fifty Cent came up to Providence and it has pro yeah prominence prominence sorry. it has nothing to do with the fact that he got shot in the face he actually changed the game when it came to mi- came to mixtapes hmm. him and Little Wayne were like pioneers in the mixtape game yeah hmm. so. If you're interested in that and seeing how much work he actually put in himself to get him to where he was, which led him to being found by Shady and Dre and moving on forward. I mean, Hip Hop Evolution is an unbelievable hip hop documentary, but episode four will give you that. So that's, you know, sweet on 50 Cent. Um, Adam Sandler said once upon a time that if he doesn't get nominated for Uncut Gems, which I'm currently watching right now, uh, he's going to make movies that are 
really bad just for the sake of making bad movies <laughs> yeah. and i guess netflix is like fine with it because they signed him on to make four more movies that's true <laughs> they apparently like his brand of stuff like they like what he say they think mm-hmm. he's funny even though most of his movies did shit but that murder mystery one apparently did good yeah like it was actually very good people, yeah like we're watching it. I never it, saw it. It, uh, came out, it. it came out kind of swinging, and like him and Jennifer Aston back. Like I mean, he she was in a oh what just movie? Just go with it. Just go with it. Yeah, and they actually do pretty real, pretty well together. She's uh, awesome. And uh, they're so, good yeah. friends in real life. Yes. Yeah. Are they? Yeah. yeah. Maybe she'll get with Brad again, and everything will be right in the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I just I just want those two to be happy. You know. Yeah. You know what I mean. I yeah. just want them to be happy. Uh, <laughs> There's feelings there. John Turturro is bringing the Jesus back from uh, the Big Lebowski, Lebowski, the character. Jesus. He got permission from the Coen brothers to carry it forward. Mm-hmm. So he's out of prison. It's called, I think it's called the Jesus Rolls or something like that. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of weird, though, because his character was like a pedophile. But... Was it's, it pedophile? Yeah. In, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. It, it, uh, there, was, there was a lot of signs of that, but oh. anyways, I think yeah. it's, it's very interesting. <laughs> so he's just creepy. It's an implied. Yeah. 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 Uh, Uncharted probably won't happen because the movie, because it keeps getting pushed back, uh, which is devastated. Uh, Grammys, Billie Eilish pretty much won any everything. And you know what? Based on what she was going up against, good for her. Yeah. I liked her album a lot. I like, I, I don't know, I think she's an incredible singer. Yeah. Uh, and that album was dope as fuck. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if this was now, recently. I saw the post recently, mm-hmm. and I didn't bother looking into it because I just thought it was dumb. And now this might go against a lot of the things that I've said on this podcast before, but I just think the the, the principal matter of doing this kind of thing is stupid. So apparently there's a petition to remove Brie Larson as Captain Marvel. Mm-hmm. I think that's just fucking stupid. Yeah. Stop writing petitions, yeah. okay? She's in. She's doing the movies. Uh <laughs> You can't have a tantrum when things don't go your way. Listen, I fucking, like, you guys know my hatred for that, and not her, just the way that she operates, and she's trying to take something and make it her own, just don't fucking sign a petition. That's just stupid. Mm -hmm. The only petition I ever signed is the one where we were going to do a Deadpool statue. They wanted to get a (laughs) Deadpool statue in the city. That's the only petition I've ever signed, and that's about it. Yeah. You know? So, that's just dumb. Yeah. Now, the big one. This is this is the really big one. Um, Nick, you're more of a sports guy than I am, I would say. Yeah, more, well, more football than, yeah, more but football. yes. Yeah. Uh, Vass, you and I, I mean, sports has always been yeah. something, but there has been a constant. Um, your era had Michael, ja- Michael Jordan, mm-hmm. and Michael Jordan was and still is one of the greatest basketball players of all time. Yeah. Um, the comparisons between... LeBron and him, I still don't agree with because I think Michael Jack, Michael Jordan, sorry, I keep saying mm-hmm. Jackson, is just fucking larger than life. However, my generation, we had Kobe. Mm-hmm. And most of you know that on last Sunday, was mm-hmm. it, uh, Kobe and his 13-year-old daughter, along with seven other passengers, died in a helicopter. A helicopter he's taken many times. Mm-hmm. Like, for his own health, he takes the helicopter everywhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, and he travels. He takes it to. A, he he took it originally was to avoid traffic. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's not stuck in traffic. It's just so he's yeah. you know, and I mean I don't know what obviously like I think it was something about fog or something to do with something, um, but it is a big loss, mm-hmm. and um, I know like Ethan, Kobe's his guy. Yeah. Like, Ethan and Ashley, uh, who, like, I baptized their daughter, and we've been friends since we were, like, five years old. He had Kobe up in his wall everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, like, Kobe was always, like, constant. He was, like, the guy's inspiration and hero uh, since he was a kid. And there is an entire generation of people that, no matter what, if they throw something into something else, whether it's a piece of trash into a garbage whether it's, I don't know, food compost into a bin, <laughs> yeah. we're shouting Kobe. Kobe, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's, I don't know, it's it's one of those things where there are, car- there are people in this world that are so larger than life that it actually shakes the foundation of a lot, especially because he was 41. Mm-hmm. Um, it, especially because of the the tragic way that it, that it yeah, happened, and this, right? Yeah, and the shocking way. Like, yeah. you sent that in the chat, and I'm like, no fucking way. Yeah. You know? TMZ. Uh, yeah, 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 and it's uh, yeah. I don't know. It, it, like, obviously, I'm again not being a big sports person. Um, it didn't hit me as hard, but it did on a cultural level. Mm-hmm. Again, he mm-hmm. was a guy that 
been number one, however, like so many MVP titles. Um, I think LeBron just beat him in terms of overall points. And his last tweet was actually congratulating yeah. congratulating LeBron, which was like mm-hmm. something that's like, you know what? That's a class act. Yeah. And um, there was another thing I had here. Mm-hmm. Well, Kobe was one of the main reasons why LeBron came to the Lakers too, right? Yeah. Like uh, Kobe was the one who like, I mean, he's always been his mentor, right? LeBron, he's been a like, big he was brother, always yeah, LeBron's and, mentor, yeah, yeah. but like he was one of the reasons why uh, LeBron ended up coming to the Lakers was because Kobe kind of convinced. Lakers? Yeah, that's where he was like this past season. Oh, this past season. Yeah. yeah. He was in the Lakers this past season? Yeah. Oh, wait, what the fuck am I now. talking about? Yeah, I yeah. know that. Fuck, what am I talking yeah. about? Sorry, yeah. So uh, I, I think like... It, there's there's that you know there was always that relationship there yeah um I, for me i i i see the tragedy in in the situation and um and i might be hated for saying this but the the whole thing with the logo i don't understand why they so i don't know if you heard yeah. about this yeah, they, they, they want to change they the want to change the logo to him and i'm like like he's the he's the he's the person like the silhouette the silhouette right and uh, that is something where I'm like okay you say that now but then if Jordan dies you know whether it's tragic or not mm-hmm. yeah like do you change it then as well right if LeBron dies do you change it then like for me I don't think that I think that's going a step further I think retiring the number twenty four and the number eight I think is a class mm-hmm. class act I by mm-hmm. you know, and I think they started with the Mavericks they're like nobody is wearing the eight or 24 again. Yeah. And I think that is a, that's a, the classy thing to do. Like yeah. it was a tragedy. That number should not be worn again yep. mm-hmm. to change the silhouette of the NBA logo to, you know, because somebody Kobe. passed away tragically. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, I don't agree with, and maybe not to your point. No, but to your point though, what if Michael Jordan dies? Right. Who you, let's say is like bigger. Who is? Yeah. Like in terms of an yeah. overall name, like, or or LeBron now, who's now in like he is the biggest yeah. player. Like even just athlete in general, like everybody knows who LeBron is. Yeah. Knock on wood, anything happens to him, do you do you give him the same? Then what do you do? You know, yeah, it's it's a it's a hole that you put yourself yeah. into. For yeah, sure. I would say a tribute season with him being the logo. I for a season? For a season? That's sure. a good idea. I would say not permanently because the NBA logo kind of transcends the whole game. Like, I understand right. you want to honor the guy, and the Lakers and the Staples Center will definitely do it. And, like, they they're, say. They're doing it tonight. Yeah, yeah, they're doing it tonight. And uh, Alicia Keys did an amazing job as the, oh. at the Grammys. Yeah. At the Grammys and say, we're in the house that Kobe built because he's yeah. the Staples Center. Yeah. yeah. And she did an amazing tribute. The way she was talking to everybody, like, she was an amazing host. And she's passionate. An am- oh, 100%. Yeah. She's just amazing. And yeah. uh, I love her. So to change the silhouette for a season and honor him in that way, I would say, sure. Like, I don't know what the, the, that con- I agree the with. contribution, in a season, sure. The contribution that he gave to the game as being a great player. Um, I don't know what he does now he, after the as, fact. As but. a player, as a mentor, as yeah. um, as a, a proponent of the game, mm-hmm. like he, I think he retired what a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Like, so so like he was just getting someone stride. who's always been around. Yeah. And let's not forget, he won an Oscar. Yeah. Did he? Yeah. He did a short. Um, hmm. He did a short film. Animated like it was an animated short. Uh, yeah. short, and he won an Oscar for it. And I like, think he's a big like. I mean, he was. I think he was a coach of his daughter Gigi's. Uh, team the yeah. black mambas yeah and i mean she tragically died there and, and like you know it's it's a it's a shock to mm-hmm. like when wayne gretzky goes yeah it's gonna be a shock but i don't know if it's gonna be as shocking because wayne gretzky's like 60 now yeah, it, yeah. he's 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 older right yeah. i i think the better tribute to do is to have um maybe a new category of an award that you call it the Kobe Bryant Award. Oh, of excellence. It, something, right? Yeah. The SBs. Yeah, or like yeah. just you, NBA does uh, a, an awards at like yeah. night or whatever they too, have, right? They do, eh? Yeah, so yeah, that's I mean. The, I think it's, it's um, the SBs is for sports the in SBs general. The SBs for What's sports in general, NBA but what, right. yeah. I forget. But they do something, right? Yeah. Or, you know, like there's, you know, maybe they have the, like the trophy for the All Star Game is the Kobe Bryant Trophy or something like yeah. that, right? But I, I, and even that I don't agree with. But I think if you come up with like a category for something, and maybe it is because you know, like his his next stage of life was more what he's going to give back, right? Yeah. So maybe it's a community, a 
you know, like a achievement type of an award, like a feel good award, something and that, call some, it the Kobe Bryant Award. Yeah, something that and, carries that flame. And it's something that torch. that torch, and it's something that's legitimized and remembered forever because yeah. it's his name attached to it. Yep. You could change the logo, and yeah, okay, people will will know that, but thirty years down the road. People won't remember Kobe Bryant maybe as much as as they do now, so that logo won't mean anything. Mm-hmm. That's my thing. You well, do it for a year. Basketball players that's have different. Died. Yeah. Do it in twenty twenty four. Yeah, that's his number, right? Right. Twenty twenty four. Make him the logo for the year. That's fine. Yeah. But to change the logo over the over the passing of one, it, it's like, you know, again, what are you gonna do? When, when Jordan dies or LeBron or Larry Bird or Magic Johnson or yeah. whoever, right? Like there's yeah. so many stars. There's so many pioneers of the game. There's yeah. so many yeah. people that have changed it and, 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 and like been good proponents of the game, of the spirit of the game before yeah. and after for sure. Yeah. yeah it's, and that was all started with a group of uh, like it was a sports team out of BC that started this whole thing, this right. petition. So, you know, Good on them. It was a different kind of like a, at least you a know, better petition thought out of the box, yeah. right? But at the same token, that's that's the only thing that I don't, yeah, yeah, agree with. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is cool though that the Lakers are giving away twenty thousand Kobe Bryant shirts. At yeah, Staples I saw Center. that. That is pretty cool. Um, eight yeah. there. So half of it is number eight. Half of it is twenty four. And they put them on every single seat. Yeah, yeah. like. That's and they're gonna like it's gonna be a full tribute. It's the first mm-hmm. game. Mm-hmm. Lakers are playing at Staples Center. Like it is a no joke. Mm-hmm. There is not gonna be a single dry eye in mm-hmm. that place. Um and I get super emotional when it comes to inspirational stuff. Mm-hmm. Like every once in a while I'll go on Facebook and there'll be the ones where like soldiers come back and surprise their moms yeah, or their yeah. kids. Oh my god. Those I'm ones get you every time. Like a, fucking baby who's bawling and so <laughs> yeah. like, what's the matter with you <laughs> he was hiding <laughs> in a mascot <laughs> thing and he popped out and it was a hug. he was like, their waiter <laughs> um yeah so i'm and then like just the tributes throughout the week like when they they ran out the clock like the 24 seconds on both sides i mm-hmm. think it was toronto and the spurs yeah they both took penalties i think they both yeah. took penalties on each side like i don't know it's um it, it's a uh, definitely a tragedy and like there's there's one guy that decided to try to capitalize it. Um, he's a comedian. Uh, he tried to issue an apology after. He tried mm. to capitalize it by being a dick about it. And then he said after that, his comment was, I like tearing down gods. It was a joke. Sorry, dude. Yeah. Like, it's not going to work this no. time. Like, I think he just, it was too soon. You're, you're, and yeah. you're, you're being a real asshole. And, and most of his comedic part, like, friends also were like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Like, this isn't even, because there's this been a thing of, like, protecting comedy. Mm-hmm. Like protecting the art of comedy, being like, listen, jokes are jokes. Yeah. They're not out to hurt anybody. But I think the what he did in mm-hmm. uh, in regards to like r- literally as I don't know as quick as anybody can after Kobe Bryant died. Yeah, it's like this isn't gonna work, and mm-hmm. and nobody should tolerate it. And I'm not gonna. It's bad taste. It's the I think it's one of the poorest forms of taste. Yeah. Um, and then the other one is listen. I know some people are looking at it, and if you're not a fan of base of uh, bas- uh, baseball. Ba- basketball 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 (laughs) and you don't know kobe bryant let's say for whatever reason and you're seeing the outpour then you don't understand the cultural relevance of this guy okay Mm -hmm. um and also yes we understand that seven other people have lost their lives and i'll say their names right now so that we don't have so people don't uh don't think we're being dicks about it okay so it was a i believe it was a baseball coach uh, John yeah. Altabelli, Carrie Altabelli, Alyssa oh, Altabelli, daughter. Christina Mauser, Sarah Chester, Peyton Chester, and the pilot Ara Zobayan were among the people that died along with Kobe Bryant and Gianna Bryant. I understand people saying things like, well, other people died and, you know, there's other posts of like, you know, you guys are all mourning Kobe, but a soldier died in war and stuff like that. I get that. I think the best response was from a friend of mine in Calgary. He sent me this because I asked him. I was really really thinking about this, right? And so this was his response, which I feel best is like says everything. So I said, I'm like, I think there was a bigger connection. And he says, yes, I agree. It's true. Many people died and it's all tragic. But we knew Kobe better than those people. So it definitely has a greater impact. Millions of people have watched thousands of hours of games and interviews of him. We've also learned many things from his achievements, how to master your craft by working harder than everyone in the room. He is to be at, uh, to be uh, in the room. 
uh, to be a great father. There's a connection with that. So it's wrong for people to say that he's just another person. His life doesn't mean as much as the other lives because it meant more to me, and he's referencing himself, mm -hmm. and many other people. I didn't know the other people that, that so there's no emotional connection. So it's just natural. Yeah. Somebody that's able to affect that many people mm -hmm. is naturally going to have that many people that are going to mourn for them when they pass. Yeah. It's just na it's not yeah. that anybody everybody's being a dick and they're forgetting about the others. It's just the way that it works, man. Like yeah. to try to be the one to point it out to people you're being more of a dick. I think yeah. Mm -hmm. especially I, on social media because yeah, all you're doing and even in public if you're that person that's been like well yesterday a bunch of people died in this on the other side of the world it's yeah. like listen people do it all the time how come you never mentioned it the other 364 yeah. days of the year mm -hmm. yeah. you're just coming up now because like somebody on a soapbox yeah trying exactly. to prove that you're so, better yeah. um that was his response um he knows who wrote it if uh, i know he's a casual listener of us so um but anyways it is really tragic and it is really fucking crazy how it happened mm -hmm. and you're a hashtag girl dad because you've got two daughters mm -hmm. and that's been a thing that's been going around and i think if it just makes people especially you know i'm pretty sure when when christine was pregnant you're kind of hoping for boys just because you thought it was going to be easier because yeah. you're a boy yeah but now like I don't know. You've got two daughters and they're pretty awesome. It doesn't it's matter. Like, yeah. It's, it yeah. doesn't even factor. But, you know, it's it's the known versus the unknown. Type exactly. Of thing, right. So yeah. um, just like Christine was hoping for girl. Right. Exactly. She's like, I know what to do. Yeah. But yeah. It, you know, I I respect, you know, what he was teaching his daughter and like it, everything like that. He's, you know, passed on to, you know, his children. And it, it, the guy. And I don't know, like I'm, I'm seeing based on what I see, was mm -hmm. he was a good dad, right? Like mm -hmm. he was really involved, and he really wanted to, you know, help his daughter and fellow teammates, and like just show that, hey, I'm here to support you, right? Yeah. And I, mm -hmm. I, I commend that. I think the guy um, was doing the best he can, and you know, he was probably away from home for a long period of time because he's playing and he is who he practicing, is. Uh, and you know, whatever. That's yeah. how he provided for the family, but. I feel that he was starting to really enjoy life now because he was able to just focus on his family and yeah. like for that to be cut off so drastically, like uh, so dramatically and quickly. I think that's what sucks because you worked so hard for all this time and you're like, okay, hey, now I, I get to do what I want to do because of that. Mm -hmm. And then that gets ended. And like, I think that's, you know, and, and as a parent for him to be in the helicopter with her when she, you know, when they're about to pass away like that, it, there's nothing more heart wrenching than that. Right. Yeah. There's nothing you can do. So, you know, I, it, it is tragic. I think, um, you know, it's something that's going to be, um, talked about for a long time. And, uh, I think that the NBA and I think the fans and everybody is doing, uh, is going to do a good job of, of remembering him and, and doing it in a classy way, which mm. is, all you could really ask for. Yeah. And his wife just uh, spoke out the other day too yeah. for the first time. And, uh, you know, and I think it was a, it was a nice statement where she said, Hey, basically, thank you for the outpouring of support. Mm -hmm. You know, we're doing the best we can, you know, this is, we've never been without him. Right. But, uh, you know, that's somebody who not only lost her husband, lost her child. Like that's, yeah, that's, that's yeah. who you need to focus on right now. The yeah. Kobe tributes are going to come and go, but like that's who's going to need the most help right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and unfortunately, all three of us know of not only just one, maybe a couple people that have lost their kids. And that's mm -hmm. that's something that you ne you never want to be. Um, you should never outlive your outlive your kids. Yeah. And also when you see it, even from the outside, it is a different beast. Heart and especially ranger. when it's so close. Yeah. Um, Bass. Not much to say. You no. said it all. Just make sure that you guys, no matter what, if you're throwing something anywhere, just yell out Kobe. Yep. And then one day when you do it, and when you're looking at your kids, and your kid is looking up to you and asking you, hey, what does that mean? And you can tell them a story yep. about Kobe Bryant, five NBA championships, 18 all-time All-Star, 15-time member of the All-NBA team, 12-time member of the All-Defensive team, 2008 NBA MVP, and two-time NBA Finals MVP winner. Uh, led the NBA in scoring during his two seasons, ranks fourth on the league's all-time regular season scoring and ranks fourth in the all-time postseason scoring list. I mean, there's a laundry list of laundry list more things and accolades that Kobe Bryant did, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty tragic. So, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we're ending this on a bit of a somber note, but uh, Nick, 
Hey. Thanks for coming back. Thank dude. you. Good to be back. It was great. Vass, as per usual. Mm-hmm. You, you uh, do okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, who uh, tuned in once again. Um, you can find us on Instagram at The Upward Podcast. You can find me on Twitter at The Upwards G. You can email us at The Upward Podcast at gmail.com, Facebook at The Upward, and uh, Upward Podcast, sorry. You can follow Anthony's page, The Lazy Canadian, for all your meme tastic memes. And uh, that's it. I'm G. I'm Yak. I'm Vass. And we're out. Thank you.